Uh, he says, it is written, uh, a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so, you call as a believer, child of God, to live by the word. Everything that God has for you is coming through the word. It's not coming any other way. It's coming through the word. That's right. It's coming through the word. Lord made the song for a moment. Let's just go. For we get into this. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh, verse 1, and walketh not the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the city. It is the light. It is the light is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. Now, what did he say? Uh, he meditates day and night. Verse 3, he says, And he shall be like a tree. Something's happening to you. Change is taking place. Change is taking place. You're not going to be the same person. Hallelujah. That's not the first message that Jesus preached when he came on the scene. First message he preached, Matthew 4 and 17. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Who's he saying? Repent. Change your mind for the better. Change your mind. Be holy and sorry. Change your mind for the better. I like this one. The definition says, to think differently now. Another one said, do not think the same way you thought before. Amen. And so the one Paul says in Romans 12, he says, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable in him, which is a reasonable service. He says, do not to conform to this world, but be ye transformed. He says, be not for a moment. He says, be not conformed. Now, what does that mean? Do not follow the pattern of thinking of the world or the fashion thereof anymore. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. He said, be what? Transform. He said, be what? Transform. Transform. And so when you look at the word transform, it's, it means to turn into something that wasn't before. Oh, hallelujah. Amen? I'm going to see the movie Transform. I'm going to see the movie Transform. Yeah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, you know, Optimus Prime. God, hallelujah. You know, uh, he transforms from a truck into a robot. He's, in, he's, he's transformed into the truck. He doesn't look at the farm he had before. Amen. He had bumblebees. He transformed. Uh, he was the beetle dog. You know, and he, and he was what? A charger? You know, and so if he transforms, he's different. He doesn't look the same. Amen. And so when God says, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, amen, it's coming into his, his character, his, his likeness, his, his personality, his way of doing things. You don't walk like, you don't talk like, you don't think like you used to. Amen. And I like this one. You don't look like you used to. There's a total, complete change that's taking place. It's no longer living based on my will, my way. Amen. Because watch this now. My connection and relationship with God is not self-centered anymore. It's God-centered. So everything pertaining to my life is centered around God. It's centered around my connection, my relationship with Him. Amen. Something that uh, I'm sort of drawn away from in this hour is relationships. Amen. It's just about everything else except relationship with God. It's not God's will. It's my will. It's not God's will. It's my own will. 
Christ. Hallelujah. If I want to live. And so if, if I want to stay benefiting from the covenant of God and everything that he's provided for me, then I've got to stay in his wisdom. So he's God. Amen. So I've got to stay in his wisdom. Jesus said like this, I'm a man wish to follow if after me first, let him first deny himself. I have to leave myself. I have to first deny himself and what? Take up his cross and follow him. And so what you would want, <laughs> what you would do, how you would think, what you would say is on the cross. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He said, take up your cross and what? Follow him. What is the cross? We shared this before. The cross is living the life bearing the burden of self-denial. That's your cross. Every day, bearing the burden of denying yourself. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. That I'm not living trying to please me. I got to live pleasing God. Amen. And so to live to please God, I've got to get rid of myself. I've got to abandon myself. He said deny. That, that word deny is... It's a lot in that word. You need to write this down. Deny means to, number one, disown. He, to disown. Discredit. Another definition says do not even acknowledge the existence of. It goes deep. Wow. Amen. Old things are passed away, Paul said. If any man be in Christ, come on. He's what? A new, a new what? A new, create, a new creature. A new creation. So if any man be in Christ, this is the same thing Paul's talking about. Be not conformed to the world, but be what? Transformed. Transformed. He said, if you're in Christ, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. New creature. Creation. What does that mean? It means uh, this kind never existed before. Oh, my God. Come on. It means this kind never existed before. This is God's DNA. This is God's nature. Wow. This is not the nature of the flesh, the same attitude, the same character, the same way of doing things before, the same frustration, the same fear, the same bondage. Wow. So that's over. Come on, so that's over. <laughs> he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and old things are passed away. All the old stuff is passed away. That's not who you are anymore. Oh, hallelujah. You're not bound anymore. Amen. You're not subject to sickness and disease no more. See, I got to believe God. That's what God was talking to me all week, all week. He said, some of the people got to believe. You got to deal with the unbelief. You got to deal with the unbelief in their life. It's not coming through unbelief. It's coming through believing God. If my believing is going to be right, my relationship with him, my study, my, my seeking of him has got to be right. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I can't have him on part time. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh. Amen. I can't have him on part time. I can't, I can't just seek his face Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I take a break from them. <laughs> so it's not going to work like that. There's going to be inconsistencies in you. Wow. And you're going to see that the same stuff that used to come out of you is coming back. You're going to see that the same things that you used to say is coming back. The same stuff that you used to do, you're going to see the same thoughts, thank you, Lord, the same thoughts that you had, you're going to see those thoughts coming back. So the old man is dead. Come on, the old man is dead. And we got to keep him dead. <laughs> Amen. That is the purpose of your prayer life. 
That is the purpose of the word of God coming in you to discipline you, to bring structure to you, to bring character to you. Come on, hallelujah, to bring the personality of God to you, the fruit of the spirit abounding in you. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So, so I'm not the same. <laughs> I'm not the same. So, so there should be a difference in what you do, a difference in what you say, a difference in what you live out. Amen. He said, old things are passed away and behold what? All things are become new now. New joy in you. New peace in you. New life in you now. Oh, hallelujah. You're no longer living, living swayed by circumstances. Driven by, based on what's going on. Amen. A whole lot of stuff is going on in this world. And guess what? A whole lot of stuff is going to be going on. And a whole lot more stuff is going to be going on. And so the problem with the church is, is that we're looking for the world to get better. Mm. Oh, my God. Whew, ouch. <laughs> we're looking for the world to get better. Listen, the only better place is the kingdom of God. We are laboring in the vineyard of God's kingdom to get people out of the world, to get them into the kingdom. That's what your life is about every day. Every day, everywhere you are, your job, your business, everything you're doing, it's about the assignment of God's agenda for your life. Shout hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. What is the light? It is the life of Christ emanated through you. Amen. They see that there's a difference. Paul says we are living epistles. He says what? We are living epistles, which means a living letter read of men. Wow. You are the walking word of God. And so it's not coming <laughs> through the flesh. It's coming through the word. Your change is coming through the word. Your peace is coming through the word. Your joy is coming through the word. Come on. Your deliverance is coming through the word. Everything is coming through the world. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You got to fall in love with the word of God. My God. The Bible said, delight yourself in him. And he will what? Give you the desires of your heart. What was he saying? Delight in his word. Wow. Oh, my God. Look at this. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, shout I'm getting it. Shout I'm going to get it. So I'm going to get in it. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 3. And, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Wow. Wow. The word of God is going to cause you to bring forth fruit. Wow. In your season. He says, your leaf will not wither and whatever you do. Look at this. He says, whatever you do. Listen, your life is not subject to this physical economy. Your life is not subject to this natural world. Amen. Hallelujah. Your life is subject to the kingdom of God. And God spoke to me and said, tell them, they have unlimited favor, unlimited success. Wow. Your life is unlimited. Shout hallelujah. Shout no limits. On my life, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, shall prosper. It's going to advance. It's going to increase in your life. God's going to cause it so. Go to Isaiah 55. And we're going to give you these in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Said I got to believe. He says here, verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Wow. Mm. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Verse 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth. Look what he says. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. He says, my ways are not your ways. So God is calling us to live on that level that he brought us to. And that's the kingdom life. Come on, shut That's the kingdom life. Amen. See, it's got to start in your heart. It's got to start in your heart. And it's got to start in your mind. That's why Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Wow. Mm. That's where it begins. Wow. So it begins in my heart. I can't just sit back, oh Lord, I'm just wishing, hoping, and praying. Just wishing and hoping. No. I'm going to get this word abiding in me. And I'm going to declare the word of God. And I'm going to see what God said. He said to Jeremiah, what do you see? I see the rod of an almond tree. Jeremiah 1 and 11. I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, you've seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. What's he say? I'm watching over. I'm looking for my word to perform it in your life. Don't panic. Don't fear when the enemy attacks. No, 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 no. Don't, don't stress when things are going wrong. Don't, no, no, don't, don't quit. Don't give up when it looks crazy. Start declaring the word. God says, I'm looking and watching over my word to perform it. And then he says here, he says, verse 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not there, but watereth the earth, maketh, maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Wow. Oh, my God. Shout, it's not coming back void. It's not coming back empty. But he said, it's going to do what? He says, it's going to prosper, accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper. It's going to do what? It's going to accomplish that which, he, which, which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. God said, son, it's coming through the word. The word is going to do it. The word is going to bring the restoration, health and wholeness to your body. The word of God is going to bring that peace and that joy, restoration. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about this, the joy of this world. You happy because things are going okay. And then when things are not going all right, you're not happy anymore. You don't have any joy. You see. Or when things are going on, there's no peace. Look, the joy that comes from the kingdom of God is power. It is the ability to rejoice under pressure. It is the ability to rejoice when things are not so right. Amen. But I got to get it in me. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Said I got to believe God. Amen. All right. Uh, go with me. Oh, hallelujah. 
Matthew 13. So he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Wow. Hallelujah. Look at this, Matthew 13, verse 53. Shout, I got to believe. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence, and when he was come into his own country, he taught them in this synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, whence have this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And verse 57 says, and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their what? Because of their unbelief. Amen. Let's read that again. Verse 58. He says, and he did not many mighty works there. Why? Because of their what? Unbelief. Wow. Now, the word unbelief is the Greek word apistia, and it means unfaithfulness. Wow. Wow. Go to Matthew 17. We're going to break that down some more. A couple of chapters over. Verse 16, Matthew 17, verse 16. Can we just walk through the word this morning? Shout hallelujah. See, if my faith is going to be in the right place, I've got to renew my mind in the word. Amen. I've got to do what he says. I've got to follow what the word says to do. Amen. To deal with all of the unbelief. And so that word unbelief, we're going to look at it. Look at this, Matthew 17. Oh, Hallelujah. Verse 16. Look at verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not, what? Cure him. Wow. They could not cure him. All right. So we just read that he could not do any mighty miracles in his hometown. Why? Because of their unbelief. And so we see here that the disciples could not cure. That word cure that means could not restore back to health this man's son. He could get no results. All right. Verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh what? Faithless. Oh what? Faithless and what? Perverse generation. And he's given the answer why there's no results. Hmm. Wow. Amen. So over, <laughs> he said, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he did not many mighty works because of their unbelief. Greek word, apistis, and it means unfaithfulness. Chapter 17 verse 17 he says all faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you how long shall I suffer you bring the boy to me wow what was Jesus saying Jesus saying basically how long must I do what I have provided and preparing for you to do I've given you authority and power Amen. Shout, I'm getting results. Shout, I'm going to get results. But I'm going to get results. My faith's got to be in the right place. I've got to get my faith in the right place. I've got to deal with the what? The unbelief. So the word unbelief means uh, unfaithfulness. So what was the Lord saying? The Lord said to me, son, it all trinkles all the way back down to your study in the word. 
He said, if there's no faithfulness to the word, there's no faithfulness to meditate in the word of God, you're not going to be in the condition of faith. Wow. There's not going to be any results. Wow. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Come on, can we give God praise right there? Come on. Come on, just give him praise for a moment. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. So I can't be unfaithful in my relationship with him. That's where it begins. You see. I can't be unfaithful with seeking him. As we read in Isaiah 55 and 6. I can't, I can't be unfaithful in it. I can't be unfaithful in my, in my time. This studying the word of God. I, if, if I'm unfaithful in it, unbelief is going to be present. Wow. Amen. The counterfeit of faith, I gave this to you, the other service, write this down. The counterfeit of faith is man's ego. Self-confidence. Wow. Amen. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> All right. And so look at this. He said again in verse 17, O faithless and perverse generation. He said, O faithless, not enough time vested in the word. Wow. Wow. Matthew. Uh, look, go to Mark. Mark 16, 14. Mark 16 and 14. Whew. Hallelujah. Amen. Said, I'm going to get this. And so Wednesday night we talked about declaration of your faith, declaring the word of God, speaking the word of God. Don't speak what it is, what situation is, or what the circumstances are. Release the word of God. Jesus is the high priest of our profession or confession of faith. Wow. That means that you have the right and the authority to say what he said. Wow. You have the right and the authority to do what he did. And so in the beginning, when the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, God didn't throw a fit. God didn't rev back and, and start quitting and giving up. He started creating. The Bible says that what the word, the worlds were framed by the word of God. And that you have the authority to frame your world by the word of God. Amen, somebody. The Bible said that you can decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Don't call it what it looks like. Call it the way God declared it, what he said. Amen. So I got to say what God said. And I'll see. The results. Whew. Amen. He said to Jeremiah, I'm what? Watching over my word to perform it. But you got to take the time to get this word, which is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You got to take the time, come on, to get this word vested in. That's where it begins. What did what Proverbs say? He said, well, get wisdom and with all thy getting, what? Get an understanding. What did he say? Wisdom is the principal thing. I got to get that first. What did Jesus say? Seek first the kingdom. He's talking about the word. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, pastor, I tried to study, you know, it is just, oh, man. You, you, you've got to pray. The psalmist prayed, Psalm 119 and 18. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Pastor, I tried to read, but I, I just can't understand. I just can't. You got to pray for understanding. That's why the Spirit of God is here, wow. sent to you. Wow. No one can know this book on their own. Uh oh, wow. You can know from Genesis, you can, you can read from Genesis to Revelation and, and still not get it. Wow. 
Jesus said, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Not to them. Wow. You're in the covenant. The born again believer. You're in the covenant. Wow. He said to Peter, he said, I've given to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You are not living without hope. And you are not living without help and support. Oh my God. You have all of the kingdom of God backing you up. So somebody ought to praise him on that one right there. Glory to God. So all of the kingdom is backing up my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this. Mark 16. Oh, praise God. Uh, look at verse 12. And after that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. Verse 13. And they went and told it unto the residue. Neither believed they them. They didn't believe. Verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleventh as they sat at meat and upbraided them. He did what? He upbraided them. Wow. He reproached them and went off on them. Wow. That's what it means. Wow. He let them have it. Because all that they saw, all the miracles, all of the power, all of the teaching that they have witnessed, all of the miracles, casting out of, of the devils, raising the dead, and all that he had told them of his, of his death, burial, and resurrection, and the, the, the own 11 did not believe it was him after his resurrection. Wow. Oh, my God. And so he went off on them, upbraided them, verse 14, because, watch this, with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Wow. Oh, my God. Amen. He said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be what? Damned, he said. Wow. Mm. So much hallelujah. <laughs> he that believes shall be saved. That word save is sozo in the Greek. It means delivered. It means protected. It means healed. It means preserved. Watch this. I like this one. It means given power to do well. Wow. Oh, my God. It means to make whole. She says you believe. Those who believe will what? Be made whole. Those who believe will what? Be healed. Those who believe will be what? Delivered. Oh, somebody ought to praise him this morning. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But those who don't believe, what happened? No results. They will not change. Things will not get any better. They are existing and living outside of God's covenant and will. Amen. Outside of his protection. Can we give him praise right now? Come on, Hebrews 3 and 12. Come on, Hebrews 3 and 12. Praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Wow. Oh, we thank you, Father. He says, take heed, brethren. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. What's that word mean? Unfaithfulness. 
drawing back from God, drawing back from the word, drawing back from seeking his heart, seeking his face, in departing from the living God. But he says, verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our what? Confidence. Don't let it go. Hold the beginning of our what? Confidence. Shout, I got to hold. Come on, shout, I got to hold. The beginning of my confidence in Christ. Wow. Wow. Whew. Steadfast. Faith, not by sight. Amen. He said, hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Jesus said, they that endure to the end shall be saved. Keep your believing strong. Keep your faith strong. Amen. 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 Can we give him praise right there? <laughs> Hebrews 4. Look at this. Hebrews 4. In verse 1, he says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. Watch this. I want you to read this, this with me. Come on. Verse 2. He says, But the word, what? Preach, what happened? Did not what? Did not profit them. Let's look at that again. Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Wow. You mean to tell me they heard the word too and it didn't work for them? Exactly. Wow. Wow. They heard the word. They heard the teaching. They heard the word. But it didn't do anything for them. We need to turn the air up some, turn it up so it's not too cold. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it and believed. Wow. Wow. So I got to mix faith. With the word. Amen. James 1 and 22 says what? Be not a hearer only, but what? Doer. Wow. How the proverb says? Proverb says, the talk of the lips will bring you to penury, which means pennies. You'll always keep coming up short just talking about it. Wow. Wow. Amen. So I got to have some corresponding action. I got to do something. Amen. So I got to have corresponding action. So I got to do something. Amen. Amen. Oh, Father, we give you praise this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that all that you've shown us, all that you have established, Lord God, and all that you're calling for even in the vision, God, we thank you that we move forward with corresponding action. That we will see what you said. That we will see every piece and part of the vision. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. Oh, we thank you. We praise you, Father. What is it that you need right now? What is it that you need right now? What do you believe in God for right now? What, what do you need? Declare it. Just start declaring it right now. Just, just start declaring. What, what is it that you're believing for? How many, let me see your hand. You, you, you have a need right now, right now. Amen. Start declaring right now in this moment, right now. Start declaring in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Declare it is so. Come on, shout I have. What is it? Say it again. Faith. 
I have it. Say it one more time. Faith said, I have it in the name of Jesus. Who else? Come on. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. No, 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 no. In the name of Jesus, declare. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We praise you. In the name of Jesus. Who else? What do you need? What do you need? Belief. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Who said that? Amen. Amen. Who said amen? Praise God. Who else? Who else? In the name of Jesus, family will come to the Lord. You see why we're teaching this? You see why we're teaching this? Hallelujah. God is bringing your life to another level. Who else? We're going to pray. Who else? Amen. The son who turned his heart back to God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Let's worship God. Hallelujah. See, you got to confess. You got to declare. But you got to take this word and you got to apply. Put it on. We're going to put the word on it. We're going to put the word on it. Yes, ma'am. Healing. In the name of Jesus. Healing. We declare. Come on, shout. We're putting the word on it. We're putting the word on. Come on, see. Oh my God. What, what did he say? He said to hold fast that what? Confidence. Steadfast to the end. Wow. Wow. We're going to see the hand of God. We're going to get results. But I got to obey God. I got to obey God. We got to get our faith up. Come on. We got to get our faith rising up. We got to believe. It's not going to come just, oh God, I wish it would. No, no, no. Father, I thank you. You said. So we got to be taught how this works. God, we thank you. You said in your word, according to. Isaiah 53 and 5. You was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. With your stripes, we are healed. Put that scripture, mother, on your mirror. Put that scripture in your pocketbook. Confess it, declare it, meditate on it all this week. Meditate on it. I hear another one. Psalm 107. Write these down for her. Psalm 107, 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all destruction. See, God put the word on it. God put the word on it. No more just sitting back. Well, I guess this is just what I've just got to experience and deal with. Devil is lying. You're in the covenant of God. You're in the covenant of God. Isaiah 53 and 5. Psalm 107 and 20. He sent his word and healed them. So I was coming through the word. You might have to change your routine. Pastor, I need prosperity. Pastor, I need increase. I need financial increase. It's coming through the word. See, the first thing it's got to do is come and prosper you. Oh, my God. Come on. Hold your place there while, while we worship in this atmosphere. 3 John 2. Oh, my God. 3 John 2. 
He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Even as thy soul prospers. Wow. Wow. He said, What? Even as thy soul prospers. See, your soul has got to prosper in him. That's where it begins. That when God begins to prosper your soul, you begin to do differently. You begin to live differently. You're living with a greater confidence now. You're not just taking what people say and what this world is doing all around. Whew. Amen. We serve a big God. The Bible says he sits in the circle of the earth. Wow. Controls the universe. Wow. We serve a big God. The earth is the Lord's. Come on now. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell there is his. Wow. And guess what he did? Yes, Lord. I, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> go, to, go to Psalm 115. Quick, quick, quick. We, we're going we're gonna to finish Hebrews. But look at this. Psalm 115. People saying, you know, God, when are you going to do it for me? People are saying, God, when are you going to turn it around? God says, I've already given you the grace and the power. Walk through your house, anoint every door. Lay hands on the bed. Lay hands, oh my God, on, on his dresser. Lay hands on his clothes, oh my God. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's going to work for those who work it. Wow. Amen. Jesus, they asked Jesus, what must I do to work the works of, of, of God? They said, what, what must I do to work the works of God? Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, this is the work of of God to believe on the one who the Father have sent. He said, this is the work, labor in the word so that you can believe what he's declared and what he's given to you. All of the promises. All of the promises. Amen. Oh, shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Look at this. Psalm 115, verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. Wow. It's given to you. It's given to you. Everything that goes on here is up to you. Wow. 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 Everything that's going on in your life, everything, everything that, that you want in your life right now is up to you. Wow. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord says, so call in his name every day and decree and declare every day. He's saved. He's saved. I hear you, Lord. Call his name out. Confess it. Call it out. I see you walking through your house, calling out his name, declaring he is saved. He is saved. He's saved. He's saved. Serving the Lord. My grandmother prayed me out of the streets. Amen. She prayed and prayed and prayed before she died she saw her prayers fulfilled and I preached to her and my aunt in, our, in her living room wow. Wow. amen wow. you gotta 
and believe. You can't go back. Don't revert back to, well, I, I guess it's just not meant to be. No. So you have to deal. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Mark 11. Oh, come on. Shout hallelujah. Shout, I got to believe. I hear the Lord. I hear what that man says. He said to Jesus, Lord, if, if you can do anything, help us. If you can't do anything, if you can do anything, Lord, help us. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, it's not a question about what I can do. It's about what you can believe. Oh my God. Oh my God. So you gotta practice this. You gotta practice this. This will cause you to watch, pull away from some things. Wow. 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 You gotta focus in on this. This is your life. Wow. And everything that you need has already been given everything not going to be it's given to you that's why God said what do you want what do you want he said whatsoever you ask in his name he already gave you the promise that he would what he would do it oh hallelujah come on Mark 11 and 22 he says have faith in God have faith in God. Verse 23, he says, For verily I say unto you, that, now verse 22, he says, Have faith in God. What does that mean? It means have the faith of God, the same faith that God has. Wow, wow. That's why you got to renew your mind in the Word. That's why, because you, you're operating off of His faith. The Bible said that God has dealt to every man the what? Measure of faith. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. You will do big things. I see in the spirit right now buildings, big buildings going up. Businesses coming forward. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. See, <laughs> Moses sent the spies out. And they went and they saw, they saw the fruit of the land and then they brought back some of the fruit. But they said, well, when they got back, well, we saw the sons of Anak, giants in the land. Man, the land is a land that eateth up the inhabitants. Caleb jumped up and told them to be quiet. Because what they were talking and what they were saying was stirring up unbelief in the people. Yes. Doubt. Wow. He said, let us go up. Caleb said, let us go up at once. We are well able to take it. Wow. But they said, we saw ourselves as little grasshoppers compared to them. Wow. Wow. But look at what God said. God says, all of those that doubt it, they will not go. Every last one of them. He said, they will not see the land. He said, but my servant Caleb and Joshua, I'm taking them into the land. Why? Look what he said. They had a different spirit with them. Wow. Wow. All God needs is a faithful few. Shout, all God needs is a faithful few. Wow. Oh, my God. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He says, for verily, verse 23, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have 
he shall have whatsoever he saith. You will have what you say. Wow. 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 Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. Verse 24. What do you desire? When you pray, believe that you receive them. And you shall what? And you shall have them. This is the word of God. Oh my God. Let me help you today. How do I get my believing strong? Repetition. Write this down. Repetition of the word. Search the scriptures. What did God say? about your family what you I hear the Lord Look, here's a scripture for you the father is not willing that any should perish wow. but that all should come to repentance wow. Wow. you say wow. oh my God you declare that and what did he say you shall have you shall have whatsoever you say oh hallelujah amen amen he says you shall have them verse 25 and when you stand praying forgive if you have ought against any that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses but if you do not forgive neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses that's why you have to let the word come in and deal with you and your heart so that you can be free to get results. Amen. 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 Praise God. I got to read this again. I keep hearing it. Hebrews 3 verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, if we hold the begin, I keep hearing it. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Wow. Chapter four, verse two again. He says, "For unto Hebrews four and two, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. It did not profit them. When I don't get results, it's a reason." So we have to wait on God. So we have to wait on God. Abraham needed to wait on God. But what happened? Sarah tried to rush the promise. Go into my head, my, my handmaid. Maybe it's going to happen this way. He tried to rush the promise. Got to wait on God. Listen. Write the word wait down. What does it mean? Just sit back and do nothing? No. The word wait means to do this. Continue to say and to continue to declare what God says until it comes. Wow. Wow. It means to serve God. Wow. Amen? The word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day, this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place, again, if they shall enter into my rest. Drop down to verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also have ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us, verse 11, here it is. Let us labor. Therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Wow. Wow. 
What's he talking about? The word. Let us labor. Labor in what? Labor in the word. Working on your believing. Working on your belief. Working on your believing. Working on your faith in him. Wow. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. How do you know he's talking about the word? Next verse. Verse 12. For the word of God. <laughs> is what? Quick. And what? Powerful. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. He's talking about the word of God. You're going to see big things in this season. Great things are coming to pass. This new year will be a year of spiritual awakening. Amen. I was in the spirit the other day. I saw I saw buildings being extended out from this building. God is going to do something exponentially right here. But you can't say, oh, just if your expectation is the same old thing. If your expectation is the average, wow. no, no, no. think big. They that do know their God shall be strong and do great exploits, bold and daring acts unto God. Wow. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's worship him this morning. Oh, we bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. I got to believe God. I got to believe God above what I see. I got to believe God above the circumstances. I got to believe God above the situation. I got to believe God. I got to believe God. I got to believe God. Can't draw back. I can't draw back. See, Walking in what God has for you. It's going to come through conquest. There's going to be some opposition. There's going to be some fight. That's why Paul told Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. Lay a hold on eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Where the leaders are? Let me see here. Where the leaders are? Let me see here. You're a leader. Amen. Hold it up high. Hold it up high. You're a leader. Amen. Glory to God. Those of you that are leaders, Engage the vision. Think big. Oh my God. So God says, operate the vision. Not what you see. Let there be a level of stirring, passion. Drive. Oh my God. God, we gotta get this done. We gotta do this. We gotta do this. We gotta do this. That God, what you called for, what you what you have given in the vision, it's here. It's done. We it's already here. And he keeps saying, operate. Like it's already done. Function like it's already done. Hallelujah. 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 Just worship Him this morning. Worship Him this morning. 
will see souls saved like never before coming forth into the kingdom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody stand up. Come on. Let's do this first. There's one here. You said, Pastor, I need to get my life in line with God. Not where I need to be in Christ before we before we do what we need to do. Declare over what you're believing for. If you said, Pastor, I need you to pray. I want to be in right standing with God. I want to be in His divine will. Listen, nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be embarrassed of. That's why we're here. It's time for your life to go to the next level. The next level. The next level in God. God's ready to heal. God's ready to deliver. God's ready to strengthen you. Above and beyond what you've been dealing with, what you've been facing. You hear this morning, sir, Pastor, that's me. Got some things that I need to get right with God today. I want to get it right in this morning, right now. Just lift that hand high. We're going to pray for you. We're just going to pray for you. We're just going to pray for you. Pray for you. Ask you. I see that hand. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can you do one more thing? Just come quickly. Just come. Just meet me at this altar. I'm just going to pray for you. Just going to pray for you. And we're going we're gonna to pray. Hallelujah. Just come. Just come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Just come forward. Just meet me right here. Oh, God. Just come right here. 